let's move on and talk about probably one of the most um, potentially confusing or potentially frustrating pieces of Ableton Live, and that is warping. So let's talk about the basics of warping. This is something a lot of people deal with, and you, you guys probably saw this on the multi-track website. Uh, if you go into preferences here, and you go to record warp launch, everyone tells you to go here and turn auto warp long samples off, right? And the reason is, how many of you have dragged in a piece of audio, hit play, and it sounds wacky, and it sounds terrible? We got one guy, there's gotta be more than one guy that that's happened to. Okay, we got a few more people, there we go, the hands are going up. So we've all probably dragged in audio, and it just sounds weird, whether it's um, multi-tracks uh, content, or it's a, um, an audio file, a wave, an MP3, you drag stuff in and it doesn't play at the tempo you want it to unless you go here and turn that setting off. And you hear you know, blog posts after blog posts going warping, warping, don't warp, it ruins your audio. Well, the truth is warping kind of gets a, a, a bad rap and I feel bad for warping. Um, but warping is Live's way of treating audio. So Live treats audio like it's elastic. And the uh, great thing about that is it allows us to drag in a piece of audio and it can play at any tempo, and it maintains the same key and quality and timbre of the key uh, as we work with it. And uh, that's a really cool feature of Live. So as you go in and you're producing content, making loop content, if you do that on your own, um, you're able to drag in a, a, a piece of content, sync it to Live's click, and then just play loops. And any loop that you click is going to adjust to the uh, tempo of what you're playing. It's a really, really cool feature. A good way to think of this, a good visual, is think of your audio as a rubber band. All right? So we take a rubber band, we cut it, and we stretch it. So we have a rubber band, and we can stretch it longer, we can kind of squish it together. But if we took that rubber band and laid it on a ruler, right? we laid it across our ruler, the ruler kind of represents the timeline in live. And then finally, we need to set it to where we know where our start point is and where our end point is. So we're going to use push pins. So we're going to put a push pin here in the start of our song on our rubber band put one at the end, and that's going to lock that audio into our timeline where our ruler is. And then we can move those around to speed it up or slow it down. So warping gives us the ability to sync things to um, Live's click, to adjust audio. Um, but I want to show you guys, and if you're taking notes, you want to write uh, some of these down, in just a few steps, very, very easy, simple steps, you can warp any piece of audio. So it doesn't matter whether it's an MP3, it doesn't matter whether, whether it's a wave, you can do this. So let's start with those steps. First one is, um, well, obviously we want to find a piece of audio. So I'm going to go in here, and I have a live set that I'm just going to bring in a sample, which is the original MP3 recording of this, right? Um, I'm going to go in and when I bring this in, I turned off auto warp long samples in my preferences here. All right, so you can see that. Um, I disabled that. Now I want to plug in what the tempo of this song is. Now because I named my track well, I know that this is 72. So I'm going to drag my piece of audio in, I'm going to set my tempo to 72. And this is what warping is. You double click on this, you hit warp. Okay, so that's my first step, really simple. Then we want to zoom in. And all you need to do is you need to tell Live where the first downbeat is, right? So once we tell Live where the first downbeat is, things are simple. So let's play this and listen for just a second. Okay? And you can see it's almost perfectly there. Um, that's our first downbeat of our song. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to put our mouse right above that little spot. That's called a transient. When I put my mouse there, we get this little gray looking thing that's called a pseudo warp marker. And when I double click, that's our push pin, right? So that push pin in the example of pinning our rubber band to our uh, timeline or to our ruler, that's our push pin. So once we do that, then we right click and we're going to do set 1.1 here, okay? So we drag our audio in, we set our tempo to what we need it to be, and then we go and we create our warp marker and that's our push pin. We right click on it and do set 1.1 here. Now, this is the only other thing we have to do. We right click one more time and do warp from here. And what live is going to do is it's going to shift around that audio from the start of that warp marker to the end. The other thing I do just to be safe is I go to the end of my song. We'll turn that down a little. Okay. You can see our last downbeat is right there. So I'm going to double click and create a warp marker. And I'm just going to drag that to the left. So I want to line that up right at 82. And now what's really great about this is if I turn my click on, since I warped it, you'll hear that's playing perfectly with Live's click, which is really, really nice. 
The one other thing you're going to want to do is adjust what's called our warp mode. And this is what throws people off. If I go in and I adjust my tempo, say 120, you hear that? It's obviously sped it up, but it, it, sounds, it doesn't sound great, right? It sounds a little wacky. So if I go here to my warp mode, and when we're dealing with full songs, we want to change this to complex. Now, if you're using anything above Ableton Live intro, then you have access to this warp mode. If you're using intro, then you might want to use tones. But beats, as you guessed it, uh, is really only good for when we're working with drum beats uh, to shift the timing of it. So if we go to complex here, let's leave it at 120. You can hear. Now, if you ever wonder what the Lord Our God sounds like as a punk rock song, that's kind of it right there. Um, so it sounds a lot better. Now, it sounds goofy, but it's because we're playing a song it's set from 72 BPM to 120. But it doesn't sound weird. Now, let me show you one other thing that we can do when we warp. If we understand the basis of warping, which is drag our audio in, set the downbeat of one using set 1.1 here, and then right click and do warp from here, then we also have the ability to change the key of this. So this is, I'm not sure what this is originally, probably B or C. But I can go here to transpose, and I can bump this up to, let's say, four semitones, which is half steps. And I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it, and then I'm going to change another setting. But let's listen to it. Let's change our tempo back. Otherwise, that will get old very fast. OK? So it's kind of chipmunky, right? I'm waiting for someone to yell, Alvin, in the background of that. Uh, we could go the other way, and we get the uh, very white worship leading. There we go. Right, not great. Um, if you're a worship leader, if you're not the worship leader, if your worship leader sends out transposed MP3s, you probably heard that a lot. And your family's like, what is he, why is he listening to Barry White? He's supposed to be getting ready for church, right? Um, now watch this though, this is really cool. If we go back to that warp mode menu, then things are gonna sound a little less Barry White. I'm gonna let it play, and watch what happens when I change this from complex to complex pro. Okay, show you again. Okay, now let's go up. Let's go to our Alvin territory, which is about our chipmunk territory, four semitones. So you could see, there's a few things when we're talking about warping. Warping allows us to do a lot of really cool things. Um, but when we're changing and transposing audio, you want to make sure you go here and change it from complex, which works really great for full songs, to now complex pro. And that's going to give you um, the best options when you're transposing your audio. So um, that's some basics of warping audio, which allows us to sync things to the click, allows us to change our tempo, and allows us to change our key very, very easily. And it works incredibly well.